A woman charged with second degree murder and felony child abuse in the death of her two year old son made her first court appearance this morning in Pender County. Quinesha Fennell is accused of killing her child, Keith Stevens Jr., on December 11, 2017. Burgoff police saw a man holding the child in his arms on Progress Drive. Officers took the child and began CPR, but the child was pronounced dead at the hospital. Make a lot of sacrifices to even get on the football field this year. Absolutely, and their hard work did not go unnoticed, and that starts again soon. It does. They'll be back on the field in the fall. This is something that the National Weather Service is aware of, and even though there are systems in place to help strengthen their data. They are working to get budget proposals together to get that more than $5 million needed to get the radar moved and put in a better location. Strickland had been a volleyball coach at Hoggard for 38 years, which is around the time the crimes allegedly took place. And today, the Point 14 welcomed movie lovers for the first time in 13 months. The theater opened at noon and just showed their last showing of the day just about an hour ago. Their manager says they had a steady stream of customers all day. One man didn't even realize it was their first day back open, but he was excited to get out and see Mortal Kombat. So the sun is uh, more than welcome. Absolutely. I was about to say I can't wait for those 60s. Even if they're not hanging around for long, it'll be good to see them for a little while. Yeah. And three people have been arrested and hit with a lengthy list of drug charges following two traffic stops and a search of a home yesterday. 28-year-old Warren Garrett Jr. was arrested and charged with two counts of trafficking in cocaine, among other charges. He was given a $200,000 secured bond. 28-year-old Yvonne Johnson was arrested and charged with one count of maintaining a controlled substance in vehicle, dwelling, or place, among other charges. She was given a $7,500 unsecured bond. Now that stockings are empty and presents are unwrapped, you may be wondering what to do with some of your trash. Hannah, the Brunswick County Emergency Management says this is going to be a long process of recovery, and I talked to people who are going through that process right now. You can come out here and watch the show for free, and I've got to say, that is a pretty darn good view, especially for free. Might be 34 degrees outside, but it's definitely zero degrees on my toes. Today, we finally got our first look at some of the damage here in the Ocean Ridge Plantation as Governor Roy Cooper toured the neighborhood, and it is devastating. Take a look. It's devastating. No doubt about it. Governor Roy Cooper surveying the damage left behind by the deadly tornado that tore through Shalot on Monday night. At least 60 homes damaged or destroyed. Some only bricks and debris remain. We're, we're thinking about you and speaking with residents and county officials about the next steps in recovery, saying the state has provided assistance like highway patrol and other efforts. What has to happen is a damage assessment to see what the area would qualify for. And that's what is occurring right now. Many residents had little to no warning for the storm. Cooper says there's a continuing effort to improve technology to help notify the community when storms like this happen, noting that tornadoes can form in an instant. People need to look at what happened here and learn from it and see if systems can be improved to try to give people as much warning as possible. County Emergency Services Director Ed Conroe says recovery will be a community effort. We have an overwhelming um, support from our community um, to a point where yeah, we're trying to figure out what they could do and manage it correctly and effectively to get the community back in together. Looking ahead to what's next. Um, let's show everyone how strong we are as Brunswick County and I said I'm proud to be here at part of Brunswick County and lead this effort, um, but we'll get through it. And we're here at the clubhouse right now, where is the Brunswick County Command Post. And people were here earlier, residents of Ocean Ridge, picking up some supplies that they need. And they were telling us about the hail and the wind and everything that happened the night of the storm. Take a listen. Now, I have seen people on television talking about the tornado they went through and said, oh, it's like a train go. And I thought, honest to God, I put the pillow over my face because I thought, this is it, we're dying. Matt Bennett is going to have more from those residents coming up on your news tonight on WWAY News at 11. And Sheriff John Ingram emphasizes the importance of staying away from this area if you are not a resident, making sure to respect the privacy of the residents and avoiding any extra unnecessary traffic to, ooh, to make sure that people are getting in and out that need to be in this neighborhood. So reporting live in Brunswick County, Sydney Bouchelle, WWAY News. <laughs> Roosters, cows, and goats, oh my. 
Helpers of Our Farm or Hoof is a nonprofit educational animal sanctuary on Greenland's farm. Hoof president and farm owner Maud Kelly says, like everything else, COVID presented as a challenge to the farm. Before we were doing quite a few tours, um, teaching, our, everything that we do at Hoof is uh, education based normally. Um, so we do do parties and things as well, but uh, if I'm there and I'm handling an animal, I will most likely teach you about it, whether I'm at a birthday party or whether you're here to learn. Eager to get visitors safely back to the farm and help fill a basic need we've all been missing lately. We are definitely at a deficit for um, feeling the ability to touch and um, hug and embrace people and it's um, wonderful to be able to do that with an animal. So what's the solution? We are offering uh, cow cuddling. We have other animals to cuddle as well. The roosters, goats, and turkeys don't mind the cuddles either. And we're also doing family portraits with our llama, Coleman. Not only will the animals feel the love, you will too. We all know the hormone of um, oxytocin, and it creates a wonderful sense of peace and healing and love. So uh, you get that experience when you hug somebody or a cow or a goat um, and actually in turn actually makes the goat or the cow feel very peaceful as well. But maybe wear shoes with no <laughs> laces. You are just a naughty little goat. In Bolivia, Sydney Bouchel, WWAY News.